Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon. In this video, we're going to do some back to school DIYs, including this squishy notebook, a no sew pencil case or makeup bag. This matches my cushions back there. And there's going to be a bunch of life hacks and pranks that you can do if you're feeling bored in class or lectures. If you're new here, then a big welcome and please remember to subscribe to Macaroon so we can also reach 1 million subscribers on this channel. The first DIY is how to make a prank ink cartridge. To do this, you'll need some white craft glue, a fountain pen cartridge, and anything with a smooth surface such as a plate or metal lid. First, poke through the ink cartridge using scissors or the inside of a fountain pen. Then squeeze about two-thirds of the ink into a container and wash out the rest of the cartridge. Add some white glue to the ink and mix everything together thoroughly. Don't worry if the color looks a bit light, because the blue will turn much darker after it dries. Now pour a tiny amount of the mixture onto a plate, so it's about the size of a large coin. Then tilt the plate slightly so it doesn't look perfectly round. This step is quite important for the prank, because too much or too little glue won't appear realistic once it's done. Now simply place the empty ink cartridge on top. You can easily make more of these if you have more glue left over in your container. Leave everything to dry for at least 24 hours and resist the urge to touch it. The ink puddle might look dry after a few hours, but the underside is still wet. So please wait at least one full day before carefully peeling it off the plate. This final prank cartridge looks so realistic and you can simply throw it onto someone's book or table. I actually did this back in school and fooled quite a lot of people with it. The next DIY is a really easy origami bubble and you only need paper to make this. If your paper is rectangular, then turn it into a square first by folding one edge against the other and ripping off the extra part. Now take the square and fold the two corners together so it creates two diagonal lines. Press inwards where these lines are so you can get a triangle shape like this. Now fold each corner of the triangle towards the top and repeat it on the other side. Then fold the outer edges into the middle like this and repeat this as well on the other side. And now it's basically finished. So this is how our paper balloon looks and you see that one side there's an opening in it. So now we're going to blow inside to puff the whole thing up. So now I'm going to do this with these two as well. So I know that this is not the most useful DIY, but I just always found it really fun to make these and then blow into them and feel the paper puff up into a bubble. So if you're ever bored in class, then this is so easy to make with any paper that you have around and it'll keep you entertained for a little bit. This nail polish highlighter is obviously not my idea since it's been done by lots of YouTube channels, but I love how it looks so I decided to include it as well. You can start by cleaning out an old nail polish bottle using acetone, or you can simply buy cuticle oil instead. These come in identical packaging and are much easier to wash out. Now take some acrylic paint and carefully pour this into the bottle. Turn it around a bit until the inside is completely coated. Next, take a highlighter pen and you can actually get mini ones like this, which are super cheap and you don't have to waste so much ink. Pull the pen nib out with pliers and trim the back so it fits into the bottle. Then apply some hot glue and carefully glue it in place. And now your cute nail polish highlighter is done. This looks so eye-catching and also makes a great budget gift for your friends. The next DIY is a no-sew makeup bag or pencil case. To make this, you'll need a zip, some fabric, and hot glue. I'm using this awesome two-tone sequin fabric, but of course you can use whatever you have at hand. This method even works with microfiber cleaning cloth or towels. First, trim the fabric so all the edges are nice and straight. Fold it in half and make sure it's just about as wide as the zip. 
Now hot glue one edge along the zip, making sure you work in small sections so the glue doesn't dry. Once you reach the end, add a blob of hot glue to one side and then fold the two parts of the zip diagonally across each other like this. Be very careful not to burn your fingers and hold them in place until dry. Trim off any excess and then repeat with the other side of the zip. Now place the other edge of the fabric along the zip and glue everything down. Then hot glue the sides of the bag together. You'll notice that the fabric actually forms a slight angle which is created by the shape of the zip. This means you can glue one edge down flat and then fold the other one over to hide the seam. Lastly, just check if there are any gaps between the fabric and then fill these up with hot glue. And now your no sew DIY bag is done. I didn't have enough of this fabric left, which is why my bag kind of ended up the size of a makeup bag. However, this method works with any size, so you can easily turn this into a pencil case or maybe even a laptop bag. This fabric is really easy to get online and I've included all the links in the description box below. So the next hack is more of a back to college or back to university tip. This is when you might be living by yourself for the first time and you've got your own bank account, you've got your new credit card, and you also have a ton of PIN numbers that you have to keep track of. I remember when I first started university, I had such problems remembering my PIN codes, and obviously without PIN codes, you have no money. So this is actually a trick that I've been using for a long time to keep track of all those numbers which you're not supposed to write down, but which are also really important to keep at hand. So first, open up your phone book and create a new contact. Let's imagine that your PIN code is 2334. Now you have to create a fake phone number which ends with these four digits. Make sure that you use real mobile or country dialing codes along with the correct number of digits that you find in an actual phone number. Next, think of a really common name, but the important part is that you don't actually know anyone with that name. I realized that I don't know anyone in real life called Michael, at least not spelled this way, so that's the name I'm going to use. If you need more inspiration, then you can always use names from your favorite TV characters, celebrities, or even YouTubers. However, just make sure it doesn't look too blatantly fake on your contacts list. And now, if you ever have problems remembering your PIN, you just need to look up the fake contact on your phone and you know it's the last four digits of that number. And most importantly, don't tell anyone which one it is since you're the only one who's supposed to know. This hack is completely foolproof, since even if someone stole your phone, they would still never be able to guess which one it is. Real phone numbers and SIM cards expire all the time, so even dialing through the list wouldn't help. This is a fun and unusual DIY, which I've never seen on YouTube before. To make it, you'll need PVA powder, borax powder, baking soda, and some soft pastels or eyeshadow pigments. I discovered this recipe when experimenting for my slime powder video, so if you want to know more about PVA powder along with shopping links, then please check out that video here. First, measure out 6 level teaspoons of PVA powder into a small container. Then add half a level teaspoon of baking soda, followed by half a level teaspoon of borax. I used borax because it's a lot easier to activate these bouncy balls using water. However, you can also experiment by using more baking soda and using contact lens solution instead. You can also add some color. In this case, I'm just scraping in some soft pastel dust, followed by a bit of glitter. Now just shake everything up and your bouncy ball powder is done. So whenever you're ready to make this, just add two bottle caps of water. Add the first one, then mix it slightly, and then add the second. The mixture will solidify immediately and you can form it into a ball with your fingers. The reason I thought this would make a good school DIY is because you just need to add water, which makes it super easy to make in between or even during class. You can easily make more of these in different colors. Please note that this ball only stays bouncy when there's moisture inside. Just like slime, it'll eventually start to dry up and won't be as fun to play with. 
However, you can also experiment with the recipe to create slightly softer textures, such as adding more water to create a jelly blob. This DIY is non-toxic, but please remember to keep it away from small children and pets because it could be your choking hazard. The next craft idea is a really easy pencil DIY. You'll need some plain pencils, a cup, nail polish, and some paper towels. First, fill the cup with water and drop some nail polish across the top. Then add another color and mix them together a bit. This color scheme is the same as my water marble plate DIY, which you can watch right here. Now just dip your pencil inside and you'll get a very pretty design like this. Leave it to dry in a safe place and repeat it with as many pencils as you like. This method also works great for makeup brushes or phone cases so you can have a lot of fun trying out different ideas. So this next hack doesn't have anything to do with school supplies, but it is a really good way to pass time if you're stuck in a boring class or a boring lecture. This is a trick that basically lets you turn any lace-up sneakers into slip-on shoes. I'm using brightly colored shoelaces here so you can see them better on camera. You can obviously also do this when your foot is inside the shoe, which makes it useful for passing time if you're bored. First of all, remove the entire shoelace. Then take one end and tie a knot in it. Insert this through the lowest part of the shoe so the knot prevents it from slipping out. Now you want to lace everything up again using horizontal lines. Simply thread it from side to side until you have something like this. Try to make sure that your laces always look nice and flat, so if you notice any twists then be sure to pull them straight. Now grab the end of the shoelace and thread it under the first row. So you want the remaining shoelace to be coming out from underneath the first horizontal row like this. And now all you have to do is weave the shoelace over and under each row. Pull everything a bit tighter while you're working so it looks roughly like what I'm doing here. A typical shoelace should be long enough for you to weave 7 vertical rows with a little bit left over. Once you reach the end, just hide the last bit of shoelace underneath everything else. I find the easiest way is to pull it through the hidden loops that you created when lacing up the horizontal rows. And now your slip-on sneaker is done. Not only does this look pretty cool, it actually saves you a lot of time if you're too lazy to keep on tying and retying your shoes. When I was 16, I laced all of my sneakers like this, so I can say for certain that these stay on your foot without any problems. Now let's make this crazy, squishy notebook. This is a fun and surprisingly easy DIY. All you need is a notebook, some squishies, a piece of card, and hot glue. I'm using this really cheap school notebook, which only cost about 3 euros or 4 dollars. However, the cover is a bit too flimsy, so we need to strengthen it with some card. You can often find this type of thick card in the back of calendars or sketch pads, and that's what I'm going to be using. Of course, you can also skip this step completely by starting with a notebook that already has a hard cover. If you want to use card, then trim it first to fit your cover. Then apply some craft glue and carefully spread this into a thin layer. Place the card onto the cover and smooth everything out. If you want to, you can also paint this in a different color. This might be a good idea if you don't have a lot of squishies, so there's going to be a lot of gaps in the cover showing through. However, in my case, I plan to cover the entire notebook with as many squishies as possible. These are obviously left over from my giant flome video. You can get mixed packs of these squishies very cheaply online and I've included all the links below. These aren't super high quality, so this is actually a good DIY to use up any random squishies that you have lying around. Now start arranging everything onto your notebook. Try to make sure that each squishy sits completely flat and that all the shapes fit together nicely without too many gaps. 
If your squishies have a hook at the top, then you can pull or cut these off using scissors. This just makes everything look a bit neater. Now start hot gluing everything into place. Try not to move the squishies around too much so you can see exactly where each one is supposed to go. Hot glue sticks extremely well to squishy foam so you don't have to worry about any of these falling off. And now your adorable squishable notebook is done. So I think this notebook is great for people who just love playing or fidgeting with things while they're sitting around in class. And of course, you can play with this as much as you like and your teachers can't take it away from you because it's obviously part of your school supplies. So this next one is actually so easy. I don't really know what to call it, like if it's a hack or if it's a prank. And I admit it's actually pretty stupid, but it's something that I used to do in school. And it got me in trouble a bit with the teachers, but it was kind of funny, so I'll show you guys. So this prank works best with long hair and glasses or sunglasses. I'm wearing my glasses right now because I'm actually super, super short-sighted. So I've had to wear glasses ever since I was like six years old. And what you do is take off your glasses, then put your hair to the front of your face. So make sure that your hair kind of covers your face. But the funny thing is, you, I can actually still see the camera. So you can actually still see when you're doing this. So put your glasses back on. And you're like a hairy monster. So this actually looks funnier as well if you're wearing a hoodie. So I'm gonna put this on. The funny thing about this is that I can actually still see perfectly fine. So if you try this, you'll realize that this, even though the hair looks dark, you can see through it without any problems. Um, if you do this in class, then you can obviously still see what the teacher's writing on the boards, you can see everything around you. You can even walk around school like this if you really want. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to Macaroon because we're so close to 1 million subscribers. You can also follow me on Instagram under my username Macaroon. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!